If you're a noob when it comes to drawing line art, then do this one trick. First off, don't manually draw the line art. This is noob. Instead, go to this finger thingy, and in the drawing tools, you'll see this thing. This lets you create these points that you can move around. Very precise. Oh yes. And once you're done, just click this check. On the other hand, if it sucks, you can just click the trash icon. I got you, fam. Now what's so cool about this is that you can adjust the line thickness like this, and also the opacity as you're editing it. Also, you can use different types of brushes to do this if you want texture. I mean, for me personally, I would stick to not doing line art at all because who does that? I just clean up the sketch and I'm good to go. It's like I'm lazy af. But this is for my perfectionist ADHD fans, you know? I see you. But also, it has another feature. Just click this fill icon right here and select whatever color you want and start using it. Shazam! It's basically like the lasso fill tool except it's more Chad. Way better, honestly. Very precise. Precision 1000. So I give this a 100 out of 10. Anyway, moving on. I know a lot of people can relate when you have this one tiny speck on your canvas and you don't know where the heck it's from. It's annoying. Ah. So what you want to do is instead of going through all your layers, you're gonna go to this special tool. Okay, so you're gonna click lasso eraser over here. And then as you can see, I've turned on all and watch and see, baby. Look at that. Very Chad tool. 9 out of 10. I didn't make it 10 out of 10 because if you have a background, it's gonna erase the background as well. And that's not smegzy. Moving on. Next, we got the symmetry tool. Just click on this ruler here and enable the symmetry or mirror tool. Okay, so I am currently drawing with this tool and guys, somebody on Reddit was like, is using symmetry tool bad? And like 90% of the comments were like, no, it's not bad. But personally, I just don't like this tool because when I use the symmetry tool, all my art ends up looking ugly ugly af. So I would say that the symmetry tool is bad because it's ugly af. Nah, just kidding. I think it's cool and kind of helpful for other people. I just have a personal agenda against it. So yeah, negative 8 out of 10. Now for this next one, I've known this trick for a very long time. This is how you can achieve the retro feel, the vintage feel. Look at this. Before, after. So if you want your drawing to look a bit more vintage or nostalgic, just duplicate your drawings like this. Then you're gonna want to go to the filter tool and click Gaussian blur. So just adjust it a little bit like this and not too much, not too little. So once your drawing has astigmatism, you want to lower the opacity like this. So as you can see, it already has that juicy low quality effect. Now let's make it even more low quality. Just go to filter again and select noise. I'm just going to edit it to my liking. Again, not too much, but not too little. It's set to overlay. I like it that way. And there we have it, a retro feel. You can do this with your art if you don't want it to look too sharp. I rate it 7 out of 10. I use it all the time, but it doesn't have a huge difference in my art. My art is already smegzy as it is. So in Procreate, there's a way to create a color palette from your image by going to the colors tab, clicking palette, and then you just want to drag and drop your picture like this, and now you have a perfectly smegzy color palette. But apparently, Ibis Paint doesn't have that, or at least I think it does. I searched for like 5 minutes though so don't quote me on that one. So instead of doing that, I saw this technique on TikTok. So I have this artwork right here. Let's say I want to steal the color palette of my artwork. All you gotta do is go to filters and then click this. This basically generates a color palette for you. Is it smegzy? Yes. I think I'll give it a solid 7 out of 10 tips. Okay, next, I always include liquify tool in these types of videos because literally everybody needs to use a liquify tool, okay? Look at this. See a mistake? Just use a liquify tool. Look at this. Very mid drawing. Look at those unjuicy lips. You can use the other liquify tool modes. Like for example, this expand mode right here to juicify the lips. Look at that. Juicy. What am I doing with my life? Okay, I did include this in another video, but there was this one TikTok where like you can use the liquify tool to close your drawing's eyes. I'm gonna show it to y'all again. I basically duplicated my drawing and then lowered the opacity. And then on the layer on top, I erased the eye like this and put the opacity to 100% again. Then you want to use a liquify tool to close the eyes and then click this thing right here and adjust the string. And then BAM! Look at that. This is just a gimmick by the way. Nonetheless, 6 out of 10. Next, stop trying to draw circles like this. Do not do that in my house. What you gotta do is go to this finger thing and on the drawing tools, just click the circle and then BAM! You can draw all the perfect circles you want. But you can also use this other tool which gives you 
a round circle. This tip is so generic though. 7 out of 10. Anyway, moving on. I just want to share that someone made an ibis paint brush based on my brush from Clip Studio and I like it. Hmm, Picasso. I got no idea who the heck made it though. I just saw it from someone who stole it. So credits to whoever you are. You are a godsend. 1000 out of 10. So a lot of people are like using the bucket tool as is. Like they're literally just clicking and then be like, oh nice, it worked. Bro, that isn't how you use the bucket tool, okay? So if you want to fill this up, just click settings, bro, and click current layer. So it only focuses on the hair layer and nothing else. Bam! Another W tip for me. 10 out of 10. Up next. A lot of people don't seem to know this. Ibis Paint has a reference window right here, which you can use to view your references or a full view of your drawing. And it's okay that you don't know that. You're not stupid. Just kidding. You are. But it's a relatively new feature, so a lot of people don't really know about it. So basically, you only need to go to settings and then you just turn on reference window. From there, you can basically import an image or you can just use it to view your whole canvas. Nice. I mean, 9 out of 10. Okay, this next thing is very random. So if you don't want your lines to be all blurry and low quality when you zoom in, all you gotta do is go to settings, then click the interpolation on zoom in. And there we go. It's very sharp now. Sharper than dreams chin. This tip is 5 out of 10. I have no idea why, but people really like that tip. Anyway, next. This is just a side tip though. If you want to resize your image without losing quality, go to transform and scroll all the way to the bottom and make sure that it's set to bilinear so it doesn't lose quality. But really, it just depends on the type of art that you make. If you're making pixel art, for example, you should use nearest neighbor. I don't know why, I just heard it from someone. Anyway. Okay, so for the last tip, this is for all my Clip Studio Paint users out there. I draw mainly on my laptop on Clip Studio because drawing on the iPad sucks. So you can basically open your Ibis Paint file on Clip Studio. All you gotta do is click this share thing and then save it as a clip file. You're gonna input your Clip Studio account and then when you go to Clip Studio, you'll see it in Manage Works on your cloud. Now all you gotta do is download it. Drawing on the laptop is supreme because I am so slow on the iPad. But anyway, I kind of fixed it. Not really satisfied with the results but yeah here's the speed paint Okay, cool. I hope you learned from this. Watch this video next and I'll see you there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your homies if you have any. And I'll see you. Stay cool.